The conclusion of the 2020 Tattersall's Craven breeze-up sale saw expectations exceeded despite the challenging backdrop, with an average price of almost 100,000 guineas and a top price colt selling for 575,000 guineas, matching the highest price achieved for a colt at last year's sale. The Night of Thunder offering was sold by Johnny Collins of Brown Island Stables for the sale topping price, having been bought by Collins for just £72,000 as a yearling. The standout pinhook success was achieved thanks to bids from both Mark McStay and David Redvers before Tom Biggs of Blandford Bloodstock pushed the price up to a final bid of 575,000 guineas. Stallion Knight of Thunder, who has enjoyed an excellent start to his stud career, ended the day as the leading sire by average, with two lots selling for just over 300,000 guineas. One of the unique features of this year's sale was the facility to bid online, and it was that which allowed successful purchaser Simon Chappell to secure lot 51, an American pharaoh colt, for 400,000 guineas. Online, thank you very much indeed. 400,000 buys. Set to go into training with Simon Crisford, the fast breezer was sold by Star Bloodstock, having been bought by the operations Byron Rogers and New Minster for $170,000 as a yearling, before joining Matt Eves and the rest of the team for his breeze-up preparation. He's been like an iron horse since the start, you know, everything we've asked him to do, he's just gone, he's done it. You know, you just ask him to do anything and he's always, he's always been quick into, quick into action, quick into gear. Showed it on the breeze, he breezed, you know, Really quick, 20.5 seconds up the rolling mile, third fastest on the day, big stride. I mean, I don't know what more you can ask for in a breeze. It's just, you know, he breezed exceptionally. He's been exceptional throughout. The highest priced filly on the day was lot 152, an offering by American sire Hardspun out of grade three place lemon drop kid mare Lemonette, who was sold by Mocklers Hill for 375,000 guineas. Signed for by the Cool Silk Partnership and Stroud Coleman, the US import appealed to buyer Peter Swan of Cool Silk, who mentioned the possibility of her heading abroad, having recently sent Midnight Sands to US-based Brendan Walsh. Stroud Coleman Bloodstock also signed for Lot 71, a Kodiak cult out of Life of Pi, consigned by Church Farm and Horse Park Stud. Signed for by Anthony Stroud, the colt by sire of the moment Kodiak, who enjoyed three Royal Ascot winners earlier this month, hails from the family of Armoury and was purchased on behalf of owner Sheikh Dej Al Khalifa. It was another Kodiak colt that proved popular just a few lots earlier, when the Grove Stud consigned lot 53 out of pivotal mare Honeymead, made 270,000 guineas, selling to Chris Dwyer as agent with Victoria de Souza. A nice one consigned by Grove Stud. I loved his breeze. Um, he did a nice enough time. He'd still, I'd say, plenty left in the tank. He'd real quality, a good walk, um, you know, past the vet with flying colours. So, you know, I just liked him. He'll probably stay in race here and hopefully we'll try and win a maiden with him. And then he'll probably go abroad. We're not 100% sure yet, but he'll probably go to Amy Murphy because she's flying at the moment as well. So. She has a horse for the owner already, so and she's won with that and done really well with it. So hopefully uh, he'll go there as well. Star Bloodstock featured amongst the day's top lots again, this time in partnership with Longway Stables, who secured 250,000 guineas for their Sayuni Colt out of listed winner Marsh Hawk. Bought by John and Jake Warren on behalf of Sheikh Issa Salman Al Khalifa, the offering is set to join Richard Hannon and adds to two other purchases by Jake Warren on the day, including a Twilight Sun filly bought on behalf of Bermuda Racing for 210,000 and a Vadamos Colt for 90,000 guineas, both from the day's leading consigners by aggregate Tally Ho Stud. We're looking for fast action here. Um, and the Vadamos Colt that we bought for Hype Care Thoroughbred Racing did a, an extremely fast time. He's a very solid horse. Vadamos himself was a very high class miler. Uh, he's got a fast pedigree, so we, he should fit the bill and be a fun horse to get going with. Twilight Sun filly that I bought for Bermuda Racing, she, she was different physically than anything I've seen here in quite a long time. She was one of the best physicals I think I've nearly seen. Um, and her breeze was outstanding. Um, and Twilight Sun himself is such a high class sprinter that I think you know, she should be a really fun, fast horse to get on with. There is still plenty of racing left though, there's still plenty of two-year-old racing left and I think one's got to take the optimistic view here. Um, the market is softer, we've been able to probably buy horses that we might not have been able to buy in usual years. 
and there's a lot of exciting two-year-old racing left. So, you know, I think we've got to look at this positively. It's great to be here. It's great to be at Tats. It's great that our industry is up and running. You know, we, we've just got to get excited. The highlight of the relocated Tattersall's Ascot Breeze Up sale that immediately followed the Craven sale was Lot 13, a colt by Prince of Lear, consigned by Knock and Last Stables for 92,000 guineas. The colt by the sire of exciting Royal Ascot winner the Learjet, sold to Mark McStay of Avenue Bloodstock on behalf of trainer Joe Parr, one of 50 lots to sell for a total of just over £1 million, with a clearance rate of 88%. At the conclusion of proceedings, Tattersall's marketing director, Jimmy George, reflected on this unique edition of the season's first breeze-up sales. Yeah, I think it would be fair to say that the set of circumstances leading up to this year's combined Tattersall's Craven and Ascot breeze-up sale have been the strangest that any of us have ever encountered. And uh, I'm rather hoping that we won't, <laughs> we won't encounter them again, albeit maybe possibly at the... the Guinea's breeze up on the July sale in a few days' time. But, uh, no, look, it's it's not been straightforward for everybody. And I think, in, in that respect, everybody needs a huge pat on the back. The breeze up consigners have done a great job. They've worked with us extremely closely every step of the way as we've had to make changes, followed by more changes, and then even more changes after that. So to get here this week with this collection of quality two-year-olds is a tribute to an awful lot of hard work and an awful lot of teamwork. And I think, I, I genuinely think everybody takes great credit from, from the way everything's gone in the last few days. And uh, not just the consigners, but the buyers also. You know, they've responded, they've stepped up to the plate. Uh, it hasn't been easy. There hasn't been any racing for, you know, for a couple of months until the first week of June. So it's not been easy for owners and, and bloodstock professionals trying to generate business. But there's been real enthusiasm to buy quality two-year-olds here at the Craven Breeze Up today. And I, I think the results have been better than anybody could have expected. The quality at the Craven Breeze Up sale is, is the key and the buyers come here every year expecting to see some of the best Breeze Up two-year-olds to be found anywhere in Europe if not the world and uh, we had an 82% clearance rate today. We had a top price colt, 575,000 guineas, which is actually the same price as the highest price colt at this sale last year. and. The turnover and the average price have been very respectable as well, with the average price nudging 100,000 guineas. We would have taken this. If, you, if you'd suggested that those sort of set of statistics would be achieved a few weeks ago, I think we'd have been thrilled to bits. A couple of weeks ago, we staged our first online sale just before Royal Ascot, and that went really well. We were very pleased with that. And we introduced live internet bidding here at the Craven Breeze Up sale. I would say for the first time, but we actually introduced it 12 years ago and uh, there was limited take up and we sort of, we parked that one for a while. But it's very clear that this is an innovation that suits the current circumstances. There was participation at all levels of the market, including the 400,000 guineas American Pharaoh cult, which, which just shows that I think this is technology that really works in the bloodstock market.